Hello, I'm a postdoc in Andrew McAdams' lab, and this is a project that I conducted as part of my PhD research at the Iowa State University, uh, working with Fred Jansen. Okay, so this is an experiment that I conducted on the nesting ecology of the painted turtle, uh, and I conducted this research along the Mississippi River in the northwestern part of Illinois. Uh, painted turtles spend the majority of their lives in bodies of water, but females venture onto land to construct terrestrial nests a few times each summer. And there's no post oviposition maternal care in this species. So after a female drops her eggs into the ground and goes back to the water, uh, uh, maternal investment has ended. All right, just a little bit more of background information before I get into the experiment and what I, uh, how I analyzed it. Um, we know that as females venture further from the safety of water, that their predation risk increases. And so I'm showing you that here on the left in this conceptual figure. Um, however, uh, that is in conflict to the predation risk of embryos while they're in the nest. And so we know that nests that are laid closer to the shore tend to experience elevated predation rates. And that's because nest predators such as raccoons tend to forage along environmental edges uh, such as the shore. And so what we see here is that there's a conflict between uh, maternal survival being, or maternal predation risk being the lowest as females nest close to the shore. However, uh, embryonic survival while in the nest uh, is increased as those nests are laid further from the shore. And so what I wanted to know is uh, if females perceive that they have elevated predation risk to themselves, do they nest closer to the shore? And importantly, does that occur at a cost to offspring survival? And I'm also interested in whether or not that maternal response to predation risk might vary across the female lifespan. So we might expect that younger females will invest more heavily into their own survival and thus future reproduction, whereas we might expect an older female to invest more heavily into that current reproductive bout because the likelihood of future reproductive opportunities is lower uh, as, as a female ages. Okay, so here's a schematic of my study system. We have the Mississippi River in the foreground. In the middle of the screen, we see a, an optimal nesting beach. And in the background, we see a forest where turtles don't like to nest. Females spend the, their lives swimming around in the water. At some point, a female decides she would like to nest. She ventures onto land, locates a spot that she would like to nest, and then she begins to excavate that nest site with her back legs. I monitored the nest site every hour from sunrise to sunset during the uh, nesting season. And when I observed the turtle, I would watch it from a distance and confirm that it had committed to digging that nest site, um, but it had not yet advanced to dropping its eggs into the nest. I would then approach that turtle, pick it up, measure its body size, uh, and then I would uh, count uh, its growth rings on its pectoral scutch, which is similarly to counting growth rings on a tree. And I would use that to estimate age and either bend that female as being a young female, likely in her first few years of reproductive life, or an older female. I would then paint a big white letter on her back so that when I see her uh, again, I would know that I had uh, previously disturbed that female. I then ex exited the area, at which point in time the female would then emerge from her shell and flee to water. No turtles continued nesting after this disturbance. Uh, all turtles fled to water, suggesting that they did indeed perceive this as a risky situation. Turtles would then swim around uh, at some point in, in the future, would then decide to nest again. When they ventured onto land that, that next time, I would see this turtle nesting from a distance, note that it had a big white letter on its back, and I would let it finish nesting. After the, the turtle left, I would then go and excavate those eggs, split them into two groups and bury half of them in an artificial nest adjacent to nest site one and half of them in an artificial nest adjacent to nest site two. Burying them in artificial nests let me uh, confirm that the nest construction of those two nests was the exact same. The natural nests had varying uh, degrees of nest completion uh, and I did not want that to influence any of the effects that I was looking for. I then monitored uh, those nest sites every day after this uh, for the rest of the nesting season to look for signs of predation by raccoons. All right, and what I predicted was that mothers would nest closer to water uh, following that disturbance event and that this would occur at a cost to offspring survival. 
And I also uh, predicted that older females would respond less to that simulated predation event than younger females. Okay, so to analyze this, the dependent variables that I was interested in uh, were nest distance to water, and that's continuously distributed. Uh, I was interested in the fate of the nest. Did it survive or was it predated by raccoons? That's binarily distributed. The independent variables were, was the nest laid before disturbance or after disturbance? And maternal age, was she a young female or an older female? And I used a generalized, or I, I'm sorry, I used a general linear mixed model to analyze nest distance to water. And I did that because nest distance to water is continuously distributed. And I used a mixed model framework because I had multiple observations for each female, two in particular. Um, and so I wanted to be able to control uh, for those multiple observations. All right, and then I used a generalized linear mixed model to analyze the fate of the nest. And my model framework looked like this. Uh, I have uh, independent terms of disturbance and maternal age, uh, but then I was also interested in that interaction of that. So I predicted that there would be, uh, that the maternal response to that disturbance event would depend upon how old she was. And so I've included that interaction term here, uh, plus maternal identity as a random event. Okay, and my process uh, for this analysis was to run the full model, uh, then have a look at that, the stats for that, um, for that interaction term. If it was not significant, uh, then I would remove it. If it was significant, then that would be my final model. I would then rerun the final model, and then I conducted a likelihood ratio test to compare the final model uh, with the final model minus the random effect to test for the importance of that random effect. All right, and what did I find? Well, I disturbed 30 females. These consisted of 11 young females and 19 old females. They returned an average of 44 hours after disturbance and nested an average of 113 meters away from that first nesting attempt. And here I'm showing you uh, female B. Uh, she was disturbed, uh, but upon coming back to nest a second time, was uh, predated by raccoons. And so I show you this to highlight that these adult females should be quite sensitive to their own predation risk while they're making these investment decisions. Okay, here on the y-axis, we're looking at the distance to water. And first we'll have a look at how young females uh, nested. On the left, we're looking at nest sites chosen before disturbance. On the right, those nest sites chosen after disturbance. And lines are connecting nest sites that were laid by the same female. And what we see is that most females nested a very similar distance after disturbance as they did prior. Uh, we see a couple females that nested closer to the shore and one female that nested quite a bit farther from shore. But overall, uh, not a big effect. Older females, the story is quite similar. Uh, most females nested a very similar distance after disturbance as they did before. Some nested closer to shore, some nested farther from shore. And statistically, uh, we find no evidence of that disturbance event on how far females nested from water. We find uh, an effect of maternal age. Uh, and so it turns out that older females nested an average of 11 meters farther from water than younger females. Uh, and we interpret that as those older females are investing more heavily into current reproductive bouts, um, nesting in locations with uh, lower nest survival, uh, and taking on a bit more risk for themselves because they have fewer reproductive opportunities in their future compared to those younger females. All right, we find no evidence of an interaction. Um, and we do find uh, that maternal identity uh, explained a significant amount of variation in how far those turtles were, were nesting from water. Okay, so um, given that we didn't find an effect of that disturbance event on how far females nested from water, I wouldn't predict that we'd find an effect of disturbance on nest survival. All right, but young females, uh, chose nest sites after that simulated predation event that experienced uh, lower nest survival than nest sites chosen before simulated predation. And older females had an ex uh, a similar uh, effect. And statistically, what we see is that disturbance had a significant uh, effect on average nest survival. Um, we find no effect of maternal age and that uh, interaction uh, was not significant. So. Uh, young and old females uh, had a similar effect here. 
And similarly through nest distance to water, we find that maternal identity uh, explains uh, significant variation in whether or not uh, a nest survived. Okay, so what conclusions can we draw from this study? Well, we find no evidence that simulated predation altered how far females nested from water. But despite that finding, we find that nest sites chosen after simulated predation were 17% more likely to be depredated than those chosen before simulated predation. And so what I think is going on here is that females were altering nest site choice in some variable that we did not measure. And uh, qualitatively, we have some evidence of that. And so I think that females were probably picking nest sites that were uh, of a sandier substrate that might have been easier to dig into uh, so that they could complete nesting faster. Um, and or uh, an, it, females might have been picking areas with less grassy structure over their nest sites, again, possibly because they would be able to uh, construct those nests faster. All right, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, if you have any questions on this research, uh, feel free to uh, shoot me an email, david.delaney at colorado.edu. Um, and if you're interested in reading more about this paper, uh, you can find the full article, um, which was recently published in Animal Behavior. Uh, there are a number of additional variables that we recorded um, and some uh, additional stuff that we did with the experimental design, um, but in a short time frame, uh, would have been tough to get through. So thanks for listening. Uh, have a good day and happy analyzing data.